Well, the finance industry's infrastructure is rapidly evolving and it's being argued that the approach businesses take to this new environment has to change too. So how should financial service providers be embracing this new paradigm? And what will become their unique selling points as they adopt new platform-based business models and tackle new digital asset classes? Some tough questions, but here to explore those issues and more, we're joined now by Rajiv Tumala. He's the head of digital and data for security services at HSBC for Asia, Middle East and North Africa. Welcome to Cybos and welcome to Toronto. Thank you very much for having me. So talk to us a little bit about the defining characteristics of digital assets and what makes them compelling. So if you look at digital assets and, and question yourself, why should you care? The redeeming feature of a digital asset is its programmability. And what exactly is programmability? So if you look at how assets have been represented, the asset representation has changed over years. If you go really a couple of hundred years back, you know, assets were represented as stones and you know, other artifacts. But coming to the modern times, the assets were paper-based. So someone wrote something on a paper and then gave you, yet you trusted it to be the representative form of an asset. And as technology kicked in, computers came through, databases came through, and then you started registering asset ownership mm. on a database, and the industry calls them dematerialized assets. So they're all entries in a database, owned by me, owned by you, and the natural evolution is to sort of bring in more software, more technology to represent assets. And that's the redeeming feature of a digital asset. It's programmable. Mm -hmm. So then that redeeming feature sort of gives you second order effects like composability and fractionalization. So you can compose uh, digital assets together from another digital asset, or you can sort of divide up a digital assets and make it more accessible. Mm -hmm. So that sort of brings in inclusivity as well. So what's the impact, would you say, of, of digital assets infrastructure on securities services providers? And as we just discussed, right, asset representation has always changed. Mm. And that means that as you bring on new forms of asset representation, and in this case, digital assets. So for security services provider, it sort of opens up, I, I do think, a new world of opportunity. So Today we service a certain types of assets so that, is, that are securitized and issued at central securities depositories. Uh, but as you look at the new infrastructure, new, new infrastructure that is required for digital assets, the security services providers are going to have more, not less opportunities. Uh, and as with, as the application of software into asset servicing makes them more efficient. I do believe that that provides security services providers to add or add more functions that value add in the ecosystem in the value chain. And so can you talk a little bit about how this new asset landscape will lead to e evolving roles for the providers? Yeah, so evolving roles I think is the key, key word there. So primarily, primarily if you look at one of the bigger advantages of digitization or digitalization is there is a concept called as real world asset tokenization. That is digital asset paradigm will allow you to represent any asset in the world as a, in a tokenized form. Uh, so that whole paradigm then sort of democratizes asset issuance, right? So, and then we have seen it uh, in the recent past. So as service providers, I think it, it sort of becomes our enhanced responsibility sometimes to sort of curate the assets that we want to support. So therein we are bringing an element of trust, saying that the asset that is represented from the real world is something that we have checked, we are happy with its quality, and hence we are able to support and service it. Mm -hmm. uh, and as that kicks in, today we service and support a subset of assets in the real in the financial world and that potentially can increase right so the total addressable market for a security services providers will increase and with that comes more opportunity uh, and also i think it will also bring in more 
roles that we can play because the kind of asset servicing that is required for real world financial assets, uh, real world assets, it will be slightly different. Mm. So our, the form and function while probably remaining the same, the way we deliver that function uh, will change uh, owing to again changes in the infrastructure. Mm. So it's almost like looking at your telecom providers, right? So the telecom providers do exist today and they did exist 20 years back, but the smartphone has changed mm. how we, they deliver service. It's no different for security services providers as well. So things are changing, they change at a rapid pace. So how, how are security services providers going to help themselves and um, more importantly help their clients bridge to this new changing world? So the primary purpose of a security services provider is to connect our clients to an asset network and let them know that our client's primary job uh, is to make the decisions to buy, sell, or hold an asset. And then we provide the operational infrastructure behind that for them to ensure that the asset is held safely and it is serviced and they receive all the rights of owning the asset. Hmm. And that continues to be the driver for security services providers. It's just that in the new world, there will probably be a lot more digital asset networks or a lot more asset networks. And our primary function continues to be able to connect our clients to these asset networks uh, and act as that single window uh, while they focus on which assets to hold, which assets to buy, and which assets to sort of sell, right? So they continue to look into that while we provide them access into various types of digital asset networks. Mm. And so we'll see the industry move beyond innovation to experimentation, right? And, and to build pro production grade infrastructure. The next important aspect to ta tackle then is commercialization. Yep. So uh, how, how should providers address this? So if you primarily look at where do we get commercial value from, right? So the commercial value continues to come from our ability to provide access and service these assets. And that continues to be the main driver of commercialization. Now, as the infrastructure develops, we, we are in the very early stages of this development, as you correctly pointed out, uh, experimentation and then moving on uh, into production grade. We are probably in the first mile of a 100 mile journey. So the opportunities are going to come from helping clients uh, get access to these new asset class as they come on board. Uh, the second opportunity is also coming from providing a transitionary bridge, right? Providing a transitionary bridge for traditional assets as they begin to be represented as digi digital assets. You know, the value is going to coming f come from us coming together as an industry uh, to provide that transitionary bridges as well. So n not all assets need to wait uh, uh, till all assets are issued as digital assets. So there will be a function that we need to provide in the near future where we transition assets from the traditional form to the digital asset form. It sounds like part of the commercial and the, the, the operational transformation would entail shifting to more of a, a, a platform approach. What, what would your views be on this? So programmability, as we spoke about, uh, it, right, it, it sort of brings some, of sta some standards, right? So uh, a program does not exist if the underlying data is not in a standard format. So, and once you standardize the asset models, the life cycle, uh, so that they can be operated uh, on by smart contracts. So you are sort of putting together what I would say the building blocks of platforms, right? Imagine due to great digitization, you know, today there are a lot of e-commerce platforms that are out there. You can actually go out and buy tangible physical things on an e-commerce platform. And all of that platform is allowed because there was foundational infrastructure laid together by these marketplaces. And digital assets and the related infrastructure is also laying down the foundational infrastructures that are required for platforms. 
and from there i think you're going to sort of bring in solutions that serve various needs of our clients and all solutions need not be provided by security service provider right like in an e-commerce platform not every product is provided by the same seller there's there's going to be multitude of service providers there're going to be multitude of solution providers on a platform but digitization and and digitalization right both of them uh, are going to set the foundations lay the foundations for platformization of this service industry right so security services has always been looked upon as operational infrastructure uh, or or an industry that provides operational infrastructure you're going to move from process led operational infrastructure to i think a solution led operational infrastructure the keyword still is the operational infrastructure but it's going to be delivered using more software mm-hmm. less process who is doing the process software is doing the process but you're sort of wrapping the process around software and that's the transformation i think will be will be the key change that we will see for the next 3 to 5 years mm. and and talking about that uh, the next 3 to 5 years talk to us about the road map for security service providers how do they extract the most value out of the trend towards tokenization and platform as a service yeah so extracting value should follow creating value and so maybe we should ask ourselves as security services providers as to how are we going to create value as i said as more real world assets gets digitized and represented as tokenized assets i think one of the value that we will provide is curation right we provide oversight governance i think we will provide connectivity to the right kind of networks we'll also provide interoperability of assets across networks uh, there is collaboration that needs to be done uh, across uh, the industry uh, industry as well but the core value is going to come from giving confidence to our clients that we can safe keep the assets in the new infrastructure as well mm-hmm. and that's going to be critical and then there will be a bunch of other value added services that we can provide providing access uh, providing asset servicing ensuring that rights and obligations are respected for and and safety and security and taking care of cyber risk because in an increasingly digital world that again becomes the responsibility of the provider to be able to safely connect transfer move value Rajiv, we so appreciate you taking the time to come and chat with us. Rajiv Tamala is the head of digital and data for securities services at HSBC for Asia, Middle East, and North Africa. Uh, thanks so much for being with us, and we hope you enjoy the week here at Cybos. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Mm-hmm.